So today we're building a home gym out of walnut plywood. Now, you might be thinking, why build a gym out of a material this nice? Well, this is going into my new house and it's going in the same room as my office. So I want the workout and fitness equipment to kind of all match the desks and office decor and storage and all that kind of stuff. I already posted the video for how I made this very funky looking chin up bar. And today we'll be testing that, maybe to the point of failure, but we'll see. But I also added a dip bar that could eventually be also a standing desk if I just put a little board across it. And a place to hold this very nice vintage looking punching bag. Also gonna show you how to fill a punching bag because when you order them, you wanna order them empty so you don't get killed on shipping. Now at the very end of the video, I'll be showing how I'm actually making some new styles of weights. I've been working with a fitness professional and we got some ideas on making kind of a dumbbell or barbells that look a little bit different than what you might be used to, but that will focus on additional things that are really important for me in my day-to-day -day work as a maker of working on things like grip strength in addition to just, you know, getting that bicep pump. This video is sponsored by Cuts. They make these very nice shirts. And I thought it was a good fit because it's they're all about work leisure and I tend to like to wear the same thing when I go out as I do when I'm building stuff. So we'll be giving you a thorough evaluation of the different fits from Cuts. All right, but let's get started on the dip bar. So this is the dip bar. It has three layers of plywood on each side. We're using the same French cleat detail. Locks in real solid. It rests against the wall here, and if I see that I start damaging up the wall too much, I might add like a felt or leather pad back there. I did add leather to the back of the sort of French cleat cutout, and that just keeps it from scratching this nice walnut as I slide it around to reorganize my gym. Plenty of strength at three layers, but we'll do some weighted dips at the end to sort of really see how strong it is. Now, if you're really going hard into paint and really pushing apart and getting some explosive action in there, I created this little ledge up here so you can add a block that will keep the whole thing from moving up. Don't really think that's needed with the dip bar. It's more something I developed for the punching bag holder and for the pull-up bar. I've had this punching bag for a while. It's quite nice. It's from Modest Vintage Player. And when I was designing a holder for it, I don't really need an extra pull-up bar, but I was thinking that if I was gonna make a holder for it, it'd be cool to figure out a way that the holder actually does two functions. So the punching bag hangs from a eye bolt up there. That eye bolt just has a washer on the other side, and this part comes off. Now, I probably could lock it down with a glue and some screws, but I think it should be with this one and a half inch slots in both directions plenty good and this way I can also use it as a pull-up bar. So I kind of like the idea of multifunction. Probably refine this design one or two more times before I do the final installation but I do like this idea of making a simple rack. These could even be handles themselves that you grab for a, a, just a different grip on pull-ups um, but it also holds something like the heavy bag or medium weight bag. The pull-up bar looks really cool, and it's only two layers thick. Now, I think this is plenty strong, but we're gonna test that. That being said, my prediction, if it does fail, it won't be at the bar itself. This plywood, I mean, look at how many layers there are, it's quite strong. My prediction, if it does fail, would be some of these screws pulling out, or here. Um, I feel like it's pretty locked in solid on the French cleat detail, and I really like that I got these stop blocks that keep it from bouncing up. The track itself is in three pieces. I have a full long eight foot section in the middle and then two shorter pieces to fill into the ends of the wall. It's one layer on the back, two layers for the French cleat and then that top cap layer. It has two coats of polyurethane, but I do predict it'll get a little bit scratched up, but I can always buff that out and add another one every five or six years or so. Now for now, I'm just using finished screws to hold it to the wall and you see I have them every 16 inches going into a stud and I had to make sure I found the studs to, to get a solid finish. You wouldn't want to be doing pull-ups and then the whole thing comes down. I also put an additional really long screw kind of tucked in behind the rail so I don't quite get that same visual pockmark like I do with those ones. Now, when I do the finish installation, I'll probably countersink these holes 
use a screw with a much bigger head, probably a bigger screw too, so the holes aren't wobbly. And I'll probably recess it a little bit and didn't do a walnut plug, and that'll be when it's in its final resting place. One of the things I was curious about is how much vibration is gonna travel through this system. So for example, the glass won't spill. Now, I'm not Francis Ngannou, so who knows if someone really strong hits it, but What's encouraging to me is this means I can also put in storage stuff along in between the fitness equipment. So I might do like a little hanging shelf, which holds some hand towels, bottle of water, place to set your phone, maybe like a Bluetooth speaker or something like that. So that'll probably be next is some sort of, yeah, like kind of like medium sized storage things that hold in there. It might hold like have a hook for my hoodie and stuff like that. This video is sponsored by Cuts. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I'm pretty muted in my clothing. I'm pretty much always blacks and grays, and I prefer to wear the same thing. So when I look at a clothing sponsor, I take it pretty seriously and think, would I actually wear that? So I'm wearing the crew neck curved hem t-shirt and the AO joggers. These are both in mediums. They're really well made. I don't feel too sloppy. I could do everything from a workout, go get coffee, run errands, things like that, or sit and do office work in something that's a lot more comfortable than jeans. I think my go-to use for the joggers will be when I'm traveling. They're way more comfortable. They got a lot of movement than typical jeans and they have good pockets, right? And that's one of the things I don't like about wearing sweatpants or anything like that on a flight. I always worry that I'm gonna lose my pocket or my phone's gonna fall right out. So good comfort, good pocket security, ready to travel. The hoodie's really nice. And the one thing that always drives me about crazy about hoodies is I don't want a plastic zipper, I want a metal one. But I also like it to be matte and they really nailed this detail. It's real metal, but it's like a dark, kind of mattish, murdered out finish. So looks really clean, isn't gonna clash. Typically I wear a hoodie under a jacket. Now my favorite item from Cuts is the AO long sleeve Henley with a curved hem. It gives me that slim athletic fit but with the length and the curved hem detail that reduces my chance of showing plumber's crack on camera because I'm moving around a lot. I went ahead and ordered some more of the AO Curved Hem T in black, of course, and a few more of the long sleeve Henleys with the curved hem. If you want 15% off your first order from Cuts, go to cuts.team slash homemade modern to get 15% off and use the promo code homemade modern. The links will be in the description and shout out to Cuts for sponsoring this video. All right, back to the project. Now, not everything in the gym is gonna hang on the wall. I'm working on design right now for a bench and it'll be very similar to the gym in the box project that I did, well, years ago when I was still in Boston. I want a really simple padded workout bench. It's gonna be leather and walnut. And I think I'm gonna go with some sort of storage for weights underneath. Now, speaking of weights, this is the other project that I'm working on. I haven't quite figured it all out yet. I wanna make low cost weights, in this case, just ABS pipe and concrete. But what I like about this design is that it really focuses on grip strength. As a maker, you don't really need to do super heavy lifts. Anytime you're lifting over a couple hundred pounds, you probably should get help because there aren't clear handles. Where I find myself actually needing more strength or having sort of useful strength as a maker, it's in grip strength. So if you ever had to try to grab a piece of plywood, it may be only weighs like 40 or 50 pounds, but if you can squeeze it so hard and you got a really good squeeze, you can pick it up and get it out of the rack much more easily and not have to go around and get underneath it or grab a corner. So I'm working on some, I don't know, hand weights. I'll make different lengths so I can get different actual weightages to them. I think these are about 20 pounds. The other thing I like is one of my favorite exercises is doing farmer's carries. And when you do farmer's carries with these, it really focuses on the forearm. And uh, it doesn't, it's actually even more comfortable on the hand too, because you don't have that, that cold steel digging into your, your grip. The older I get, the more I realize that fitness should be tailored towards the habits I'll actually follow. And I'm really kind of past that age where I'm trying to think about gains and what my personal best is. I'm on the downside of the hill at almost 45. So, I'm really focusing on how do I design objects that look good, that I'm proud to have in my home, that I enjoy using, and that basically where the incentive is built into the design. So my idea with these is, I've been watching this sort of Huberman podcast and learning about the importance of getting sun outside. So what I think I'll do with these ones is, I'll put a pair of these by my door that goes from my bedroom out into my yard at my new house. 
And every morning before I have coffee, I like to go on a little 10, 15 minute walk, just get the blood flowing. But now I'll mix some farmer carries into that. So I'll just pick these up. It's not a workout that you need to warm up for. It's, you can do it half asleep. And it's just a way to kind of multitask, get some sunlight, stretch out a little bit, get the blood flowing with a walk, but also focus a little bit on grip strength, which is useful, and uh, maybe a little shoulders and traps as well. I have been cutting out the pieces for this project using my CNC machine, but you absolutely could do this with a jigsaw and a palm router. I cut out a few different profiles for the dip bar because I wanted a socket for a cross support and I wanted some overlap right above the right angle joint. With how strong this plywood is, I probably could have gotten away with just two layers, but three has a nice thick hand feel. I glued the three layers together and then routed and sanded the edges. The cross support socketed in nice and tight, so I felt that glue would be strong enough to hold it together here. If I was going all jigsaw and router though, I probably wouldn't have socketed this. I just would have used my Craig jig to do some pocket holes. If I was building this for a client other than myself, I'd probably use real walnut plugs here, but for my own use, I'm perfectly okay with finished screws and the little wood putty over the top. For the bag holder, I want to have a lot of strength where the device meets the French cleat. And that's because the crossbar that holds the bag is removable, so I'm not getting extra rigidity there. I fill exposed pocket holes in a few different ways. When I'm really lazy, I just use wood putty. Sometimes I put in dowels and then just flush trim them. But this time I just cut another panel and I'm just gluing it on to cover up the pocket holes. I'm using a water-based polyurethane as a finish, and I went with two coats with a light sanding of 400 grit sandpaper in between. The best reason to go with three layers here instead of just two would be just to add more wood around the eye bolt. But again, I'm not exactly a heavyweight, so I think this should be good. I watched quite a few YouTube videos on how to fill a punching bag. I'll link to those below. But here's what I came up with. Cutting and taping together circles of cardboard help give the bag shape at the top and the bottom. I cut circles that were about two inches smaller in diameter than the inside of the bag itself. The heavier the bag is, the less it'll swing. So I filled up some plastic shopping bags with nice clean sand, made sure it was dry so I don't get any mold or mildew inside, and then kept adding layers of additional plastic bags and tape. I used about 15 pounds of sand oriented towards the bottom of the punching bag. I typically save old clothes to use as shop rags, and a punching bag is really just a weighted bag full of rags. I washed all this discarded clothing, made sure it was completely dry, cut out any zippers, buttons, or pieces of metal that were attached to it, and also just cut them up into relatively small pieces so that I could get a nice even stuffing. I was really surprised about the amount of rags that it took to fill this bag, and that's because I compacted them pretty tight. I'd add about six to eight inches of rags, and then use a stick to poke them down and try to keep it nice and even. I added another circle of cardboard near the top with plenty of rags around its edges and just over the top of that. I then laced it all up. All right, let's get to the testing. I weigh 170 pounds, and typically I never do weighted pull-ups with more than a 45 pound plate, but when I teased this project on Instagram, there was a lot of people telling me that this would break with anything over 200 pounds. Honestly, I don't know how much weight this thing can support, but I have a suspicion that it's going to be a lot stronger than I am. All right, let's watch for deflection under 240 pounds. All right. Feel free to critique the form in the comment section below. Yep, my chin didn't quite go high enough. It moved a little bit, but I still feel my form is going to falter before the plywood. I added on a 10-pound plate to bring the total to 250, and still no problems with the plywood. I'll try it with 245s, and I'll post that on my Instagram link in the description. The next time one of my meathead friends that weighs over 200 pounds is in town, I'll have him give it a try. Or if any of you engineers want to work out a formula to approximate the static weight equivalent of a pull-up, I can just hook a rope or a chain up to it and load it up with plates. So I probably have two more videos left in this series. One more where I make the bench, which will be used for the workouts themselves, and probably show you in that one how I make some kind of creative weights. And then the final video will be installing it in my new house, which just as a quick update, we're finally getting the window, so we should be able to complete construction on that relatively soon. So we'll do a final sort of install video in its final location and give you the tour and then also show you my sort of typical workouts that I do on a typical week. Thanks again to Cuts for sponsoring this video and for the nice new threads. And keep an eye on my Instagram. You'll probably see me wearing those, and that's probably like the most sincere endorsement I can give is I actually use the product.
All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.